Hello everyone, this is Professor Ng Chi Kun from Minimas. I'm giving you a topic on approximate analysis of statically in 13 minute trust in this video. So, in the trust, we have some trusses that is they are used for lateral bracing of a building and they are considered as non-primary elements. So if they are non-primary elements, then we can use the approximate methods for the analysis. So in this case shown here, this truss is indeterminate to the third degree. So let us revise on how to determine the indeterminacy. So to determine indeterminacy, we have to look at B plus R and also 2j where b is the number of trust members and then r is the number of reactions and j is the number of choice in the trust system so in this particular example here we have 16 trust members Reactions because this is pin supposedly we have a horizontal reaction H. So the total number of reactions is three. And then there are eight joints. So B plus R gives us the number of unknowns in the structural system. And two J J is the number of joints in the system. So one joint will give us two equilibrium equations. So meaning that the number of joints multiplied by two will give us the total equations, equilibrium equations that we have to solve for the unknowns. So if B plus R is greater than 2J, then the truss is statically indeterminate. And the degree of indeterminacy is given by the physical numbers of B plus R, in this case is 19, and 2J in this case is 16. So B plus R is greater than 2J by 3. So meaning that we have indeterminacy to the third degree. This means that we have three additional unknowns that we don't have available equations to solve. So therefore, we have to make three assumptions in order to have the equal number of equations to the number of unknowns. So ex explain here, three assumptions must be made in order to reduce the trust to one that is statically determinate. Assumptions may be made with regards to the following. When one diagonal in the panel is in tension, the corresponding cross diagonal will be in compression. There are two methods of analysis that are generally acceptable. So method one is that if the diagonals are intentionally designed to be long and slender, it is reasonable to assume they cannot support compression force. Otherwise, they may easily buckle. Hence, the compressive diagonals is assumed to be a zero force member. So in this particular case, if we cut across the truss, across uh, AB, and isolate it as a free body diagram, then it will look like this. Please take note that this panel shear V here is not part of the free body diagram. And then, when the truss is subjected to loading like this with such reactions here, so there is no horizontal forces, so we can conclude that the reaction in the horizontal direction at the pin here is zero. And then by inspecting the mode of diffraction of this truss 
it may deflect this way. So in this case, the top of the truss will experience shortening. So therefore, the top part of the truss will be in compression. And then the bottom part of the truss is subjected to elongation. Therefore, it is uh, related to tension. So we know that from inspection of the deflection, we have the top member in compression here and the bottom member in tension here, F2. And then for the diagonals, so to look at the direction of the diagonals, we have to look at the direction of the panel shear here. So the panel shear here has to be downward because it has to be in equilibrium with the upward direction here. So meaning that the diagonals has to produce a resultant force that is downward for the panel shear. So therefore, this diagonal here having the force Fa will have to be a force that is uh, slanting downward so that it has a vertical component that is downward in line with the panel shear direction. And for this particular member here, which has member force Fb, the member force will have to have a slanting downward direction as well so as to produce a downward vertical component in line with the direction of the panel shear as well. So from the assumption that we make, we can see whether FB has a value of zero or it has a value of compressive force. So in uh, method one here, we assume that the diagonal that support compression force is long and slender and it may easily buckle if compression force exists. Therefore, we can consider that the diagonal member that is in compression to be a zero force member. So in this particular example, FB that is in compression is set to zero. We said that this diagonal cannot take compression force. Therefore, this force must be zero. In this case, the whole diagonal shear V is taken by the diagonal member in tension. And then we have uh, method number two. So for method number two, if the diagonals are intended to be constructed from large road sections such as angles or channels, they may be equally capable of supporting a tensile and compressive force. We will assume that tension and compression diagonals each carry half of the panel shear. Therefore, in this method 2 here, we assume that half of the panel shear V is taken by FA and half of the panel shear force is taken by FB. So in this case, FB is normal zero, but it has a value of compressive force. So that each of the vertical component of force A and vertical component of force B will contribute to resist the panel shear V. Let us look at this example here, which is in your textbook as well. So the question is, determine in bracket approximately the forces in the members of the truss. The diagonals are to be designed to support both tensile and compressive forces, and therefore each is assumed to carry half the panel shear. The support reactions have been computed as shown here, which is uh, 20 kN upward for this pin support here, 
and a 10 kN upward support reactions appears at support C here. So this particular truss is subjected to a 10 kN force downward acting at joint A and a 20 kN downward force at joint B. So in order to do the analysis, we need to cut across a panel. So we cut across a panel like this and isolate the left hand side of the structure as a free body diagram. Then we'll get something like this. So we have to put in the support reactions of 20 kN upward at joint F here and then the external force acting in joint A going downward of 10 kN and the dimension of the truss in vertical direction is 3 meter and then in this particular truss by inspection we know that the top part of the truss will be subjected to compression and then the bottom part of the truss will be subjected to tension so therefore we have FAB equals to a tension and FFE equals to compression and then this panel shear here arising from the sum of the total force in the vertical direction for equilibrium this panel shear has to be 10 kN downward and take note that this panel shear force is not part of the free body diagram here but this panel shear is the resultant of the vertical component from FFB and vertical component of FAE so in this case we have the slanting uh, direction of FFB in uh, tri triangles of 3, 4 and 5 set up so in this case when we want to look at the equilibrium of the truss or the free body diagram of this part of the truss we have to sum all the forces in the vertical direction so in this case if we take the upward direction as positive so this 20 kN force is upward so it's positive over here and then this force of 10 kN is downward then it's negative over here and then we have the vertical component of FFB so the vertical component of FFB is 3 over 5 of FFB but we know that FFB is equal to FAE in magnitude so we just simplify this to be F so in this case the vertical component of uh, FFB is 3 over 5 F downward so it's negative 3 over 5 F and then the vertical component from FAE is 3 over 5 F downward as well so therefore we have another 3 over 5 F which is downward that gives us the total of 2 times of 3 over 5 F one from FFB and one from FAE so there are no other vertical forces so we have can equate all the forces to be total forces to be zero in the vertical direction so from this particular equation the solution is that F is equals to 8.33 kilonewton and we get a positive solution meaning that we have assumed FFB and FAE in the correct direction in the first place so FFB is a tension so FFB should be 8.33 kilonewton in magnitude and it has a tension and then FAE is compression with a magnitude of 8.33 kilonewton so after that we want to solve for the other forces in this truss which are FAB and 
F F E. So first we sum moment at A and the total moment should be equal to zero for equilibrium. So in this case we sum all the moments uh, at A here and it has to be zero. So in this case this 20 kN force pass through point A, so no moment from this 20 kN force. This 10 kN force also passes through point A, so no moment from this 10 kN force as well. FAE passes through point A as well, so no moment from FAE. And then FFE has a moment arm of 3 meter, so yes, FFE will produce a moment about point A and then F, FB has a moment arm towards uh, point A as well so yes FFB will produce a moment so for uh, simplicity we derive FFB into two components one in the horizontal direction and another one in the vertical direction so this vertical component of FFB will pass through point A so this one produces no moment so essentially we have only two forces to consider for summing moment at joint A so if we take anti-clockwise moment as positive so this force of uh, FFE here FFE will have an anti-clockwise moment about joint A. So FFE times 3 will be positive in our sum of moment equation. And then this horizontal component of FFB will produce a clockwise moment. So the horizontal component of FFB multiplied by the moment arm of 3 meter here will have a negative sign in the sum of moment equation. So this horizontal component is 4 over 5 F. So essentially we have minus 4 over 5 F times 3 plus FFE times 3 equals to 0. So FFE is equals to 6.67 kN which is positive. So meaning that the initial assumption as of FFE as a compression force is correct and it is a compression force. And then next we want to solve for FAB. So to solve for FAB, we now want to sum the total moment at joint F. So similarly, this 20 kN force, this 10 kN force, and FFB and FFE all passes through joint F. So they don't produce any moment. Left only FAB and FAE. So for simplicity, we derive FAE into a horizontal component as well as a vertical component. So the vertical component of FAE also passes through joint F, so it doesn't have a moment about joint F here. So left only FAB and the horizontal component of FAE in the moment equation. So similarly if we take anti-clockwise moment as a positive, so FAB times its moment arm is a positive value, so FAB times 3 is positive. And then the horizontal component of FAE is in the right to left direction with a magnitude of 4 over 5 FAE or F. 
So this force will produce a clockwise moment about joint F. So therefore, negative sign is put on to the moment produced by the horizontal component of FAE. That is F as well. So in this case, the horizontal component is 8.33 times 4 over 5, and then the moment is 3, and then it's a clockwise moment, so it's negative. So solving from this equation here, FAB is 6.67 kN, and we assume that it's in tension initially, and we get a positive solution here. So I mean that it's in tension, and the magnitude is 6.67. Kilo Newton. And to solve for the member force of member AF, we can just sum the, we can just take, use the method of joints, taking the joint at A. So we, here we assume that FAF is in tension, and then we already know that FAE is in compression. So FAE is in compression with magnitude of 8.33 kN and then we have uh, FAB which is in tension with a magnitude of 6.67 kN so this is 6.67 kN tension that is going away from the joint and then we have external force of 10 kN downward over here okay so if we sum all the forces in the vertical direction for this particular free body diagram then we get a solution of FAF which is positive 15 kN so positive meaning that the assumption of FAF as tension is correct initially so this is in tension similarly we can cut across for the other member forces in a member ED, DC, BC, DB and EC and also EB we can cut across a section like this and isolate this part the right hand side of the truss as a free body diagram as shown in this particular free body diagram here so it this one gives you a total panel shear of 10 kN as well so by using the similar method as presented for the first part of the analysis we can get all the member forces so that's the end of the class for today thank you very much for listening